We welcome everyone to this August the 1st, 2022 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. So will you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. And please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today and take care of one of our most precious gifts, and that are our children. We, I pray that you give us the wisdom to do what's right and always do things that are right in your eyes. Please help, please bless the teachers, students, staff, administration, everyone who has a role in influencing these children and make us for the better. This I ask in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We do have an audience for guests. Mr. Ron Capehart for Limebogger. Dr. Frost, members of the Board of Trustees, my name is Ron Capehart. I'm an attorney with Limebogger, the delinquent tax collection attorneys for the school district. And tonight, I want to take just a couple of minutes and I get to do the funnest part of my job. I get to deliver money to the school. Uh, thanks to the real estate market that we have uh, ongoing right now, we sold three struck, previously struck off properties at our most recent tax sale. And in addition to collecting all of the past due taxes on those tracks, we also ended up with excess proceeds on each of those three tracks. And so today I'm proud to deliver $11,427.88 to the school district. To the general fund for the use as the school sees fit as excess proceeds. I'll give that to you. And with that, thank you all. And uh, hope to be able to bring more at the next one. Thank you, thank you sir. You're always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Please bring three next time, okay? <laughs> all right. Now we're going to go to the superintendent's report. Well, we've had an exciting um, last couple of weeks. We had our Administrators Academy last um, Tuesday and Wednesday. We um, onboarded our newest administrators and we learned a lot and we did some team building and so it was really um, a really rewarding and um, fun two days. We want to thank Navarro College for allowing us to be there. Um, we enjoyed using their facilities and we're very appreciative of that. Last week we also had our new teachers return so we welcome our new teachers to Corsicana ISD. They had staff development last week. Um, they worked with our administrators and um, they got to know each other and they got to have some fun while learning a lot about what it means to be a teacher, what it means to be a tiger. So that's exciting. And today was convocation. We had Dr. Jill Seiler as our keynote. She did a great job. And we um, it was just wonderful to have everybody back together in the same room. And I, I say every year that this is my favorite day of the year. And it really is because everyone was back they were so excited and they were really excited about this next school year so um, our first day of school is August 10th and we look forward to seeing our students on that day thank you thank you very much okay we're gonna go into closed session very quickly um, discuss section 551.0821 
Okay, we're back into open session. Um, we have some announce or some emotions, I believe, that we're going to discuss at this point in time. Board, I would like to make uh, the motion that we name Margie Crow to assistant principal at Corsicana High School. Second. I've got a motion and a second that we prom that we promote Margie Crow to assistant principal at Corsicana High School. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Margie Crow, you are now promoted to the assistant principal at the high school. Thank you. Congratulations. Secondly, uh, I would like to make a motion that we name Aubrey Blaylock as Director of Child Nutrition for CISD. As long as you keep the food going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I second that. All right, thank you. We've got a motion in a second that we promote Aubrey Braylock to the Director of Child Nutrition. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. Congratulations, Mr. Blaylock. Well, I just want to thank the board for these two um, hires. Um, first of all, Margie Crow is amazing. Um, she does great things already for our district, and so we're excited to have her at the high school. Uh, Mr. Blaylock has experience with Walker Food Services, and he also um, has experience with school districts, and um, we're very happy to him, have him in our food services department. So welcome, Corsicana. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go into the Collins Scholarship Report. Mr. Gordon. <laughs> Jordan, I want you to note that I did not say that, okay? <laughs> always good to follow good news. Uh, thank you, Dr. Frost and trustees for having us here. We're going to talk about the uh, where we stand year to date through June on Collins. I'm going to hand it over to Casey Fagan. He's going to discuss the uh, financial performance and then I'll review where things stand with the scholarship as far as the income being produced. All right, well, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to expedite this and hopefully keep it short. So uh, I'm gonna jump around, skip a few pages, but certainly highlight the most important areas for everyone. Uh, of course, this performance packet it's gonna start off with some commentary, uh, certainly regarding the economy as well as different market sentiments. So please feel free to read over that at your own leisure. And of course, Jared and I have also included our contact information. If any of you have any questions, we're happy to help. So. That being said, I'm actually going to start on page three of the performance report, so I'll give everyone a few seconds to flip to that. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is highlight your portfolio's asset allocation. Your portfolio is actually made up of four classes as well as multiple subclasses. As of June 30th, 5.4% of your portfolio was in money markets and cash equivalents, and that actually earns just over 2% a year now. Um, at the beginning of the year, that was earning practically nothing, uh, and that's just a testament to how quickly rates are rising. You also have about 43.5% of your portfolio in taxable bonds, as well as 51.11% in equity. As of June 30th, your ending market value is $17,512,000. This last year, Jared has sold some stock to purchase some new bullet bonds, which has actually helped prepare your portfolio for the volatility that we are currently experiencing. You can see that those bond purchases have also allowed us to outperform by roughly 30 basis points in fixed income, which is pretty remarkable given these rising interest rates. At the bottom of the table, you can see your gross of fees return of negative 10.21% for the fiscal quarter compared to the benchmark return of negative 11.2%. For your fiscal year to date, your portfolio is currently beating the benchmark by 1.66% gross of fees. More trailing return information is going to be provided for you on page four. But for now, I will jump to page six. 
In the top right, you can see a beautiful pie chart that represents the subclasses within your portfolio. This is an excellent way for you to visualize the diversification in your account. Uh, more importantly, this diversification is one of the many things that has enabled your portfolio to outperform throughout this volatile market. Moreover, the Collins Minerals, which are not included in this chart, have provided additional income for the account. Although high oil prices have certainly hurt the average consumer at gas pumps, it does produce additional income for the account, which means more money for scholarship students. And that's something that Jared's going to talk about here in more detail. Looking at the table at the bottom of the page, you can also see that we managed to outperform in all fixed income subclasses with the exception of U.S. corporate bonds. Regarding equity performance, I'd like to highlight a few different sectors, starting with materials. You can see that your portfolio actually beat the benchmark by 12.8% in the materials sector, and that's due solely to air products and chemicals, which has been an outstanding performer for you. Your portfolio is also outperformed by roughly 5% in communication services, consumer discretionary, and the financial sector. However, we don't always outperform, so it is only fair that we show you the other end of the stick. So if you flip over to page seven, you can actually see that we did underperform slightly in healthcare, information technology, and utilities. These names within your portfolio have cited multiple concerns, mostly are going to be pandemic related, of course. However, they've also noted chip manufacturing shortages, supply chain issues, as well as rising material costs due to inflation. And of course, the nice thing about that is that that is not unique to any of the individual companies within your portfolio. Those are economic issues. Um, so uh, there's you know, really no negative or advantage that uh, any of these companies are gaining. Additional return information and multi-graph reports are going to be provided for you on subsequent pages. Of course, I encourage each of you to read through these. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Jared or I. Our information is on that first page. But for now, Jared is going to come back up and provide an income projection or an updated income projection for the Collins report. See, Casey is quickly learning. Uh, I learned from Les when things are negative, he gets to present that information. So, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, undeniable that it's it's been a, st a tough year for no matter which way you look at it: stocks, bonds. You know, a rapid rising rate environment. Uh, Inflation is continuing to be a hot button topic. Uh, the one thing I wanted to reiterate to the to the trustees is, for, even though the value of the fund is down, your income is is at levels it hasn't been in quite some time. And so, feel free or you know, feel good about what your decisions were in the spring for this upcoming year. You're in good shape. If you flip to the back of your packet, there was a letter that we brought up as an income projection at the last meeting and I just wanted to reiterate that that's that's holding steady if anything that was a very uh, conservative uh, guesstimate you know we had estimated your income for this next fiscal year to be about six hundred and fifty thousand uh, I can say right now we're, we're definitely on pace if not even higher um, primarily oil and gas um, you know just two years ago through the pandemic oil and gas income had dropped substantially where you were earning anywhere from five to $7,000 a month, where now we're up close to $30,000 a month. So those, we don't like it at the oil, at the gas pump, but those oil prices certainly do help the uh, scholarship fund and that certainly provides value uh, to the school district. Uh, in addition to that, interest rates have risen sharply. Something we did earlier in this year with rates rising and a lot of the market volatility is took it from the upper range of about 60%, scaled back to close to that 50% range, and took advantage of that. So that's, you know, we have a 40 to 60% range that we're working through. And so taking all the circumstances into play and trying to, you know, generate as much income uh, as we can, that's, that's where you are uniquely positioned. In times where the market is red hot, oil gas prices are low, interest rates are low, you could take advantage of growth there flip side when the value drops it sure is nice to have those oil and gas assets along with interest rates going up to uh, provide those scholarships so no reason to uh, scale anything back you're in a great position uh, as Casey mentioned you've got about eight hundred thousand dollars just in income cash available for scholarships and that's uh, earning over two percent now and so that has gone from point Oh, 06 to begin the year at over 2%. Likely by the end of the year, we're probably going to be over 3% on that money. I know that's come up in the past as a concern. 
a large asset like that earning practically nothing, well now it's, it's earning a substantial amount of income for the fund. So you're in good position. Uh, the procedures and processes that you've uh, gone to where we're generating the checks uh, is really working quite well. We're getting correspondence from Brian, especially we're hearing from Brian a lot lately as school's about to start up, but we're able to identify. We've had a few in issues where students did not uh, or the schools did not cash the checks. We can uh, catch that uh, pretty easy. Uh, we're in constant communication with Brian on anything like that. If there's a check outstanding, we want to make sure we identify it, that the school is aware of it. Uh, some of these schools are notoriously slow at processing, and that's more often the case, and sometimes it's just uh, for whatever reason it gets lost in the shuffle. So it's important for us to identify that and make sure that student gets the uh, credit they, they need to. So, are there any questions? I have one question, Jared. So um, I know this says as of February 28th, there's roughly 1.3 um, available in that. Uh, the cash balance, is that in here and I just haven't seen it, the cash balance in that account? So if you flip to, I don't what exactly the page number is. It doesn't matter. Towards the bag. Um, on that cash balance, we have talked um, several times to you guys about the opportunity of reinvestment, especially when the market is down. And um, I think we were, t you know, most of this board is pretty new, but we've been told several times that that could not be reinvested. Is that correct? So what we have done, and I might clarify, you have 800000 in money market, but we did buy a treasury bond that's earmarked as an income. Okay. And then we also bought a... Uh, government bond and a corporate bond, okay. investment grade corporate bond, and those are all earmarked as okay. income. And so as okay. those mature, that money will flow back into your income balance. Okay. So we did invest that We back. did okay. invest that. I think okay. we had voted early in January to keep about 800000 Okay. We can always adjust that right now. That's probably not being hot. punished right. right now as much as you were in January. Of course, that, in hindsight, I wish we would have waited until April. <laughs> we right. We could have got a little better, but... You and know, the, the oil and gas lag, lags behind, doesn't it? It's typically about two or three months. Okay. And so what we're seeing right now is, is primarily when May and June, when it really got high, mm -hmm. well over $100 a barrel. For the past month, it's dropped below 100 It's kind of been in that 95 mm -hmm. to 100 range. If it, even if it stays at that level, you're, you're going to talk about substantial okay. income. As far as going back to the days of you know, seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year, production is just not there right. right now. And so, yeah, it's up, but not not to those mm -hmm. levels yet. So you'll let us know if you think that that cash balance gets a little too high, that we can, you know, do some things with it that might yeah, enhance we'll, that. We'll we'll know for sure once you do your your fall semester scholarships. Okay. We'll get an idea of where we stand. Um, you know, there's no immediate rush because the Fed's in a Right. very aggressive rate hike mode and so every time they do that the money market balance the mm -hmm. yield goes up even higher too to correspond with that so you know we if we have an opportunity to buy you know one or two year security then we can but right now it's there's no rush to do that because of what it's earning okay. so do you think that we're probably going to make a little bit of thirty thousand dollars but we'll continue to I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. Uh, everything we've read is oil prices are going to remain elevated. Now, a recession could certainly change that. Whether we're in one or not, we won't know for several months. Um, I do know demand is slowing, which is why oil prices are coming down. But there's still a <laughs> there's still a huge shortage of it. So, yeah, I mean. Even if oil had dropped to 70 or $80 a barrel, you're going to bring in a substantial amount of income. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Casey. And thank you, Casey. I'm not going to forget you. <laughs> Appreciate y'all coming by. All right. We're going to have a safety and security update. Okay, I'm going to ask Chief Stevens. Yes, ma'am. As far as the 
demonstration, I, I would prefer that we set up another unit. The, we found out today when we set up the unit in here that because of this floor and the uh, opening underneath, uh, it gives it some false readings. And so we moved it to the front foyer, which is where it's gonna be placed permanently. It is also, there must be a crawl space. So I'd rather set it up on like a high school, a buoy, where we know there's a foundation till we can get this figured out. And I'm working with the company because uh, there's different settings, uh, but it's given false readings and it's not very impressive right now. So I would love maybe the next meeting, have one set up at a campus. Uh, and I've also reached out to them regarding the ones as, in, as like this one will be a permanent fixture to get away from the batteries and get hardwired plug-ins uh, so we don't ever have to worry about switching out batteries. Uh, but we, we did learn the, the battery life will be about 10 hours. Uh, each podium, they've got a main and a secondary. The main, of course, drains the battery faster because that's the one that's actually working. And then uh, the secondary will last longer, but you'll have to rotate the batteries on the main. Uh, of course, 10 hours should get us through a school day easily. And then we will have extra batteries for extracurricular events. Uh, to continue the use of those, or we can go with the hardwire power. Uh, but he, he ran some demonstrations, uh, and minus the, we call it ghosting, false readings. Uh, I mean, it, it's impressive what it can do. Uh, now, some of the stuff that he had in these little cubes, he wouldn't reveal what they were. Uh, you know, I guess top secret, for lack of better words. I, I don't know what the stuff was, but... Uh, Anyway, he spoke a lot about Glock, so I don't know if there's something Glock uses that their machines really, really pick up on, even to the small 380s. Uh, so it was impressive, but as far as the demonstration, I really would prefer us to get one set up where it doesn't give y'all false information. The summer projects? We can, uh, completed a door check uh, for the entire district two, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, we located 291 doors, exterior doors in the district. That's every building except for Travis. Uh, so 291 exterior doors. And there were 91 doors that needed some sort of attention, uh, whether it be the latching system, uh, the door scan, uh, controlled access system, uh, the closure wasn't quite pulling the door to latch uh, or there was a closure missing altogether. Uh, so that, that report has been complete. It's been uh, passed on to Dr. Frost and to our maintenance and they are currently working through that list to get everything complete. Uh, I know the big topic, uh, Seth brought it up and, and I think Leah mentioned it uh, and I think even Jamie, the door at Collins, CO10, that door is being completely 100% replaced. It's been ordered, but we're at the mercy of the current getting, you know, equipment in. So it's going to be upgraded to what you see today uh, when, you know, new doors are put in. So it'll get rid of that old style. So that should alleviate the issue there. Uh, and we are working on getting the EOP complete. Uh, we have our first uh, safety and security committee meeting on the 9th. Uh, and that's, that's the main drive for that committee is the EOP. That's one of their big jobs. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the state put three new annexes that we have to add into our, EO, our current EOP. Uh, so those are gonna be done between now and then. And other than that, we're waiting on the 10th. We, um, we participated in a safety and security meeting um, that was um, called by um, Representative Harris, Cody Harris. Um, Several of our officers were there, our administrators, and um, two of our board members, um, as well as um, representatives from several other agencies in the area. Uh, it was a, a very informative meeting. I think it was really just to discuss where different districts are with that. And we also had a meeting with all the Navarro County superintendents, as well as local law enforcement agencies. Uh, we probably had about 20 people here in this room. Um, just um, last week to 
to talk about how agencies work together in a crisis, uh, really just so we could kind of get to know each other a little bit better. And so districts could talk about the requirements that we are fulfilling or um, working to fulfill this summer and what those expectations are from the Texas State um, um, Safety Center. It's a lot. It's it a, a lot, lot of things going on right now. And um, many of those things related to safety and security um, are not public information um, because they're supposed they're supposed to be held in confidence in case of a crisis. But um, everything that we're being asked to do by the state, we're doing those, and um, I feel like we're in a really a much better position um, because of our officers being here and them being avail available to do to take the steps that we need them to. Yes, ma'am. I was just impressed. I was like, Scott's on. You know, so if anybody is watching and listening, or probably when you're doing this kind of meeting, but just know that our district is in second hands. We're doing the best that we we, we are doing everything that we're supposed to be doing to make sure our, our, our district is safe, our kids are going to be safe, our staff is going to be safe. But Scott, I get through that season. We're doing a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, plugs, placement of plugs, uh, and, and you're not necessarily taking away the. It can be done, yes. I just wonder if that would just be a better option. It could. Some of them will be portable. They can be interchangeable. Yes. The ones that we have. Yes. It's just an adapter. Right. Right. All yeah. And today was our initial deep dive. They, they came in Wednesday a week ago. We got them delivered all across the campus Monday when my guys came back last week. Uh, and then today was the training with the company. Uh, so today was our first day to ever see one even turned on. Uh, so it, it's going to be a, a learning curve. However, it's going to be a very quick learning curve because we're, you know, T minus what, nine days. So. Uh, but yes, I am looking into the hard wiring. That way we don't have to rely on batteries. Uh, but like the ones we use at the stadium, they'll definitely be ran off battery. Because uh, those are going to be considered portable and probably moved from another location to be used out there. Correct. It's just an adapter that goes where the battery slot is. So it can be done. Now the student handbook and code of conduct. Um, in your board packet is the student um, handbook and the code of conduct. And the only modifications in the um, student handbook or code of conduct are related to the changes that the board made to the dress code, the standardized dress. And so I'm asking tonight, um, if you have, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, we are requesting approval of this tonight so that we can start school with this in place. And I, we, I did, we, we did find one typo, so we'll correct that as well. Um, but I think we um, represented the board's um, desires as far as the changes to the standardized dress in the code of conduct. I will entertain a motion then. I move to approve the Course Canada ISC 2022 23 student code of conduct. I second. Right, I've got a motion and a second to approve the 2022 23 student handbook co and code of conduct. All those in favor for this motion say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it. We have approved the 2022 23 student handbook co and code of conduct. Now we're going to review the preliminary budget. Ask Brian to come up, and um, we're going to.
start with the quarterly report um, for the board um, that'll end, well, almost in this school year. Um, people in business and finance have an interesting, not interesting, but they're just very concerned about getting to the absolute drop dead end of the budget year before they give you those solid numbers. So what we have is the budget quarterly report as of July 28th. And then the second part of this is looking at the projected budget for next year. So Brian. Thank you all for letting me uh, talk about this tonight. Um, look at the quarterly report. Um, you can see that our revenues, our local revenue, is just about all received. We'll probably get another check or two from our taxes and get that really close. Um, our state revenue, we're still due um, two more payments, as well as a underpayment from last year for about four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So we, we'll think we'll get relatively close on that one as well. Federal's looking really good, um, almost ninety nine or one hundred percent. So revenue's looking really good. We should finish all that out. Um, the main good thing is if you look at our expenditures, they are um, all um, very good across the board. Um, only 80, almost 84 percent total um, across all the expenditures. So that, that's that's helping us out a lot in this this school year's budget. Um, then if you look down at uh, the special funds, 240, um, with Stephanie uh, making the changes she did with some of the the deals, we we really increased our revenue there. Uh, for the first time, in I think two years, we're going to have a surplus to go back into their fund balance and, and start building that back up again. Um, 181 as as well. We're um, we're still we we didn't get as much revenue as we projected. We also didn't spend near as much as we had projected. And 599, um, it's usually a wash, but we we're we're getting more revenue there. Um, and we still have one more uh, bond payment to make this year, and that'll that'll total out the expenditures there. So, um, if anybody has any questions about this year, I'll move on to next year's budget. You know, one of the things that we've talked about toward the end of the year, especially April and May, is our um, transportation and fuel cost. So. Um, we we were pretty close there on our transportation cost, and we've increased the budget um, significantly for next year in that area simply because we're concerned about our fuel cost and what that's going to look like at the beginning of the school year. So looking at a 2022-2023 preliminary budget, um, we just finalized our tax rates as of last week. We got those in and we submitted them to TEA. Um, we are showing an increase in our local revenue of uh, 1.2 million, but our state revenue is going to go down almost 1.5 million. So the revenue will be down some next year. Um, we worked very hard uh, with every department to, to really tighten up the budget this year, not knowing, you know, how the the new um, you know $40,000 um, was going to affect our local taxes, stuff like that. Um, so if you look down the list, as of right now, um, I mean, everything is either went down, pretty much stayed the same. There's very few items that had any increases um, of significance. Uh, one thing, like she mentioned, was uh, transportation. Um, that shows a $90,000 increase. Like I said, that, that's just for fuel because fuel is, I mean, almost twice as much as it was last year at this time. So, so um, did you see a large drop off? In um, 51, that's just from we 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 uh, did the turf on the softball fields this current year, and we're not going to do that next year. So uh, that was um, I think $750,000 that'll come off that budget line. And then the only other one you see that really goes up much is technology, and that was just basically from the uh, pay scale that y'all approved a few months ago. Just going to next year, uh, we adjusted their pay scale, so it so it changed um, changed expenditures there. But as we said right now, we are projecting um, $285,000 surplus. Um, there's still a few more things to be um, cleaned up here, so it could change a little bit, but we're, we're pretty optimistic. This is um, pretty accurate. Um, if you look on the second page where it breaks it down by object code, you can see that a lot of savings was in payroll this year. Um, the only increase by object code you see is 6,400. That is mainly due to our um, increase in um, insurance. The appraisals on our buildings went up some, as well as just an increase in um, technology, um, ransomware, stuff like that. 
um, increased as well. Did you not get the second page there? Oh, uh, well, I, I can I can tell you about it. <laughs> yes, yes. But it basically just breaks it down by object code 6100, 62, 63, 64, like that. Uh, but the, major, the only thing you really see there is payroll decreasing, um, and then, like I said, 6400 going up a little bit because of our insurance um, going up across the district. Um, other than that, if you have any questions? Or when we got when we received our um, ADA projections from TEA, um, they were de um, estimating our ADA um, decreasing for next year. Um, it did some for this year, and we are um, we're we're putting together a conservative budget because of um, that projection as well as attendance. And that's one of the things we're really going to have to focus on this year because the amount of funds that we receive are based on attendance. And so we're going to have to really strive to hit 97, 96% attendance on all of our campuses this next year. So that's going to be a real area of focus. If we can do that, um, not worried about our budget, um, but that's going to have to be something that, that we do every day is think about our students being at school, not just because we're worried about our budget, but because if they're not here, we can't teach them. And that's the most important thing. So attendance is going to be a critical area of focus for us for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, we have the consent agenda. Do I have a motion for consent agenda? I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. second. I have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes have it and we will have approved the consent agenda. All right, we're going to adjourn into closed session permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01. Thank you.